Hi! Is there a language exam coming up for you? Then this video will probably be very helpful in preparing for that exam. In June, I participated in the test off exam and luckily got the highest score possible, TDN, uh, TDN5, it's called, which basically means C1. So step one in preparing for the exam is making a to-do list. What I put on here is all the grammar basics that I need to have mastered in order to actually get a B2 or C1. Uh, like tenses, articles, pronouns, adjectives, prepositions, adverbs, particles, lots of things that in German are very different from my own language and very different from English. You need to conjugate adjectives, you need to conjugate adverbs, it's weird and it was pretty difficult. Um, how I learned, how I practiced the grammar, I will discuss later. Another goal on the list was getting a thousand words in my gold list method. I did a video on how to use the gold list method for learning vocabulary and I'll link it up here or there. I'm not sure, left or right. No, here. I like to put things in here in past tense so that when I check them, it feels like I did them. So here it says wrote five essays and corrected first essay. Um, so first essay corrected, second essay done, corrected, third essay, yada yada yada. And then behind there I put the scores. So first essay was like TDN2, not even existent, but it was so bad that it just couldn't consider it a complete essay. Then the next one was uh, TDN3, the next one was TDN3 or 4, and then the next one was TDN4. And the last one was TDN3 again. So after having written five essays, I was consistently getting between three and four. Uh, the biggest problems for my essays were still grammar issues. So I had to focus a lot on the grammar and getting it better and making sure I don't make those mistakes again because they were taking my scores down hugely. Um, it also it also said complete five speaking tests and uh, put the scores behind there. Now speaking tests are very hard to assess yourself if you're, I mean, you're not good at the language in the first place so it's hard to pick out the mistakes and also to assess how high of a score you should be getting. That's where you need a tandem partner. You need a person who is much better at the language, make sure it's a native speaker so that they can tell you where you're making mistakes, where you need to improve, and this person should also be able to assess whether you're on B1, B2, or C1. And the last one was actually completed three reading tests. Now I don't know why I put this one on here, because when I did my first reading test I already got TDN5, which is the highest score possible, because in high school we did a lot of reading, and yeah, the reading part was actually quite easy for me. The reason I didn't put listening on here was because every week I was already putting in a lot of hours in listening practice. I had a delivery job and was listening to podcasts every single day for about three to four hours. I will link a video uh, which I did on that here on how I reached about 150 hours of listening hours. Uh, that's beyond normal, I think, for most people trying to practice for a language test, but it shows the possibilities. If you have a commute or you are on the bike or you're cleaning your house, make sure you use that time efficiently uh, and you listen to difficult material for you. Then step two is gathering the materials. If you don't have enough materials for your practice, then you will fail the test. It's very simple. You need practice materials like example tests or a grammar book that's going to give you exercises for the grammar that you find difficult and you need to learn the rules. Or basic exercises from a book that is also focused on the specific test that you're doing. What do you do if you don't have access to these materials? Well, you should find them anyway. Um, try your hardest. Find Facebook groups where people are willing to share maybe PDFs of exercises or 
I got these books second hand from a sort of Dutch Craigslist and they were very cheap. I only paid like 35 euro for all of these books, which is quite cheap if you consider the price of the new books. If you're able to pay for the new books, then great, good for you. But I think for a lot of people, it's best to try to find them second hand or see if you can find a coach or language teacher that probably has some PDFs lying around that can help you. Step three is execute. So you made your plan, you got the materials, and now you want to actually start exercising. I did a video on how to make a study ritual and how to make sure that you're able to focus. Watch that one if you're going, if you're in the execute stage so that every session is as productive as possible. And even if your grammar and vocabulary is very small, I still encourage you to produce uh, material. So basically write essays and do speaking tests, write essays and do speaking tests. Keep producing, keep improving your production of the language and improve grammar and vocabulary gradually and then the production quality, basically your speaking level and writing level will go up gradually as well. What you don't want is that you're so focused on the mistakes and so focused on using the most eloquent vocabulary and eloquent sentences possible that you're actually stifled and can't produce any type of language. Producing flawed language is not fun, but it's something that you need to do in the test. I mean, you're never going to be a perfect language. Um, you're never going to be perfect in any language. There's probably still multiple mistakes I make in English. And that's, you, we just have to accept that language. How I learned the grammar is basically find the chapters that I'm bad at. So first I did some practice tests from the book and then I looked at which concepts do I find the hardest and which concepts do I kind of already get correct just from intuition or from past learning. Then I put them on the list, the ones that I really should be mastering because I'm not good at them yet. And then I start doing all the exercises or all the useful exercises from the book. If the particular subject of the grammar is so difficult that you still tend to make mistakes or it's so counterintuitive that you tend to forget the rules every single time, you want to start using flashcards. This is all the flashcards. I think it's uh, even a little bit more. There's a little bit on my shelf here, but this is uh, pretty much what I used to teach myself the grammar. Um, Keeping track of how well you're doing with each subject or each stack of flashcards is very useful because that, that means you're able to focus your time on the stacks that really count. And the ones that you already know obviously don't have to be practiced that intensively anymore. You do need to maintain them, so I would advise you uh, just before the test is there to revise everything, all your flashcards at once, even that, that same morning, um, just to get them fresh into your mind, just to get the basic structures, basic sentences back into your mind to know how do I do these um, things with the adjectives, what kind of words do I want to use, what kind of adjectives, what kind of adverbs do I want to use, all that. The, a supplementary thing that really helped me achieve the TDN5 score was doing an intensive course with a uh, with a coach. There is a YouTuber that focuses on the test off test and looking at his videos helped me a lot in achieving this score as well as doing his intensive course. One of the most useful things that he gave for the speaking part of the test were prepared sentences that allow you to be more fluent during the test. For the TOEFL and the IELTS test, I would not recommend this. I would not recommend memorizing structures, but for the test off test in particular, this is really useful. So I would recommend getting some good memorized structures in your brain for the speaking part of the test and also for the writing part of the test. Having some 
introductory sentences that you use at the beginning of your first paragraph, at the ending of your conclusion, and somewhere in the middle to introduce your first argument, your second argument, all that. Having those sentences prepared will help you in, um, will help you during the test with your speed and also your accuracy grammatically. Whoever you found uh, capable of assessing your, um, assessing your capabilities. And after having done your first plan, you look at where did I want to go? How high of a score did I want to get? Or how high of a score do I need? And how much more do I need to do in order to get there? How much hours did I spend getting from a three to a four? And that'll tell you how much more time you need to spend to get to whatever score you need to get to. I actually made two of these. So the first one was basically to get me from three to four and the second one was to get me from four to five. So I hope this video helped you in preparing for your next language exam. If you have any questions on how to prepare for your specific language exam, leave them in the comments. I look at all of them and will try to answer your questions. What kind of videos would you like to see in the future? Leave those comments down below as well and make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.